Do you know how hard it is to get a decent fitting tuxedo in this town? Yeah, mine's a rental. You back tomorrow? I wouldn't worry about it now. I want it now. Mr. Curtis, I ask for your homework assignment. This doesn't look like it. Mr. Fresh, like, you're not going to believe this. I'm sure I won't. But try me. You see, my dog, he has a sink for peanut butter. And this morning he went for my pack to get to my sandwich, but it was underneath the homework. Ate right through it. If it was ham and Swiss, tuna fish, anything else but peanut butter. This is not creative writing, Mr. Curtis. I teach science. The use of logic, not imagination. Your homework was to define the structure of the atom. Surely you remember what you wrote? Yeah, definitely. Um, how to find the structure of an atom? Um, it's small. <laughs> well, I mean, no, it's, it's real small. Well, it's so small you can't even see it. So to find it, you'd have to use your imagination. And since imagination and science don't go together, it's almost impossible to define. Mr. Curtis, you have your lunch hour to do the impossible. And since your final science project is due tomorrow, you have tonight as well. My science project? I already finished. I'm already done. Good. Because if you fail, you'll have to repeat this class. Something I know both of us would deeply regret. papers. He was a wanted Nazi. No, I, I was just kidding about that. This is real. The question is, are you for real? Come on, Wendy, let's go. He has a gun, a Luger, pictures to the base, a Russian code book. He's not really a teacher. It's just a cover. Thank <laughs> you. 
doesn't look like the footprint of any animal I know. It's a trick. Van Sykes trying to throw us off the path. The natives say there's a creature roams these parts, feeds on human flesh. Let's get out of here. That's just a legend. There's such things as living legends. Look, all I know is Van Sykes' hideout is somewhere around here. I don't see any sign of him. He's here. You've got to believe me. Corey, how many times do I have to tell you this? I do believe you. Why, well, you're the only one who does. <laughs> Look at him, the wizard, levitating. Levitating? <laughs> Simon, wake up! Uh. Oh, Alex, you are a rascal. <laughs> I'm sorry to disturb you, Simon, but this young man feels it's urgent he should talk to you. It's classified. Who are you? Corey. Corey Curtis. How are you floating up there like that? Huh? Floating. How are you doing that? Oh, just doing some research. This bed is attached to some high-density compressed air. It's very relaxing on the back and very good for the mind. Do you want you to talk to me? What's so urgent? Oh. Can they be trusted? Who, Alex and Tilly? With my life. Great. Security, huh? Good, because we're talking about national security on this one. My science teacher, Mr. Van Slyke, he's a Russian spy. Is that right? Your science teacher? Yeah, down in Mojave, Albert Junior High. Mojave? You've come a long way. Yeah, well, me and Simon work well together. What? No, 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 no. I mean, I, I know we will. Look, we gotta get down there, because I think he knows that I know, you know? You think that he knows that you know that he's a spy? Well, a car tried to run me down on the way home from school today. I mean, it had to be Van Slyke. He's always trying to flunk me. Corey, did your mother know you're here? No. My mom works all day at the base. Listen, I know this is hard to believe, but I have proof. Well, that's good, because espionage is a serious charge. We gotta move quick, because it's going down a day after tomorrow. What is? I don't know yet. That's what we have to find out, so we can stop it. You guys gotta believe me. I am telling the truth. I always think it's important to get to the truth of the matter. All right. I knew you'd believe me. Tilly, why don't you take Corey upstairs? I'm sure he's very hungry. And after a meal, Alex and I can drive you back, all right? Great. You and me are gonna nail him, just like always. Yeah, well, all secret agents wash before din din around here. Spies in junior high school. <laughs> Don't tell me you believe that. Well, he believes what he's saying. Yeah, but he believes he's worked with you before. Alex, I want to drive him back there. He says he needs help, I'm sure that's true. <laughs> Right. It's bad enough I have to be at work when you come home, but when I come home and there's no note, no message, no... I had to get the wizard. He's half your problem. I'm sorry, I appreciate you bringing my son home, but you encourage everything that's wrong with him. Mom, come on. Corey, there's three weeks' worth of garbage that needs to be taken out to the curb. Now! She's not always as crabby. I'll be right back. <clears throat> uh, Mrs. Curtis, I'd like to apologize, but... Uh... I didn't encourage your boy to visit me. But I suppose you know he's got a very active imagination. Would you like to see who his guru is? Father? We're divorced. Almost a year now. Guilt money's paid for all of this. I'm sorry. So am I. Oh, not for flying off the handle, that is. It's just that there's a lot of pressure. Trying to start a business, keep a mortgage. And Corey, he's so in his own world. I can see how I might be part of the problem. No, please. I didn't mean to point a finger. I know you didn't, Mrs. Curtis, but I really... Debbie. Well, look, Debbie, I can see I'm a lot to do with all this. I'd like to help Corey. 
I really would. I could be his tutor or something. He said he's got a science project coming up tomorrow. You could? Well, no, you really don't have... Oh, no, Alex and I would love to, wouldn't we? Sure, yeah. Do you know any hotels or motels around here? Oh, nine says now. I don't have a lot of room here, but you're both welcome to stay. It might be a little bit cold. Our thermostat's out, and I haven't been able to fix it yet. Oh, it's no problem, is it, Alex? It'd be great. Are you sure you don't want the couch, Simon? No, I can't sleep. This isn't your fault. I'm not so sure. Look, the kid comes from a broken home. His mother's struggling. None of your games or your toys caused this. The kid's imagination just ran away with him, that's all. Yeah, and he's taken me along with him. Perhaps I've taken him along. What that boy needs is a good, solid dose of reality. No, not reality. That's what he's running away from. I know what it's like to hide in your imagination. I just want to try and help Corey to balance it with his normal life. Yeah, well, believing in Russian spies at the local junior high school isn't a very good start. I don't think you ought to encourage him. I'm not trying to encourage him. I'm sure he knows that's a fantasy. Go. The coast is clear. Yeah. We can sneak into the school, and I'll show you where Vance like hid the gun, the Russian code book, the pictures to the base. Whoa, whoa, slow down, Corey. <sighs> I think we can do two things here. We can avoid a charge of breaking and entering, and we can avoid a grade F in your science project. And get that light out my eyes. Hello, everybody. My name is Simon McKay, and Corey here has asked me to assist him in a science demonstration. One that will show us that how we perceive the real world isn't always as accurate as you might think. Corey has very kindly made these diagrams. If you look carefully at those two lines, I would like someone to tell me which one looks longer, the one on the left or on the right. The one on the left, it's obvious. Anyone else? Wendy? They're the same. You're right. They are the same. Now, here's another example on this card. The top line looks a lot longer than the bottom line, but if we check carefully, you'll be able to see that they're exactly the same length. Oh. Now, this shows us that the reality isn't always as it might seem or as we might want it to be. Sometimes our eyes play tricks on us. Now, it's very important to know the difference between what's real and what's an illusion. Oh. All right, everybody, there is no drill scheduled for today, so this may be the real thing. Quickly now, everybody out. Corey, did you pull that fire alarm? I had to get him out of here somehow. This is where he keeps the gun and the code book and everything. He keeps it locked. It was all in there. You've got to believe me. I didn't make this up. It was all in there. Recognize this? It's the tool dentists and hygienists use to scrape tartar off your teeth. Recognize this? It's the tool more of them recommend to help keep tartar off. Tartar control crest with fluoride. Look, ugly tartar must be scraped off, but you can fight cavities and help keep your teeth tartar free between cleanings with clinically proven tartar control crest. Dentists know a little more of this could mean a little less of this. Tartar control crest, the dentist's choice to help keep your teeth tartar free. You know when things really heat up? When we're inside the opponent's 30-yard line. That's when things get exciting, get hot. That's when you really start sweating. But you won't find me showering with the deodorant soap. I made a clean break with Ivory. Look, Ivory's good, honest soap. So I don't feel all covered up with deodorants or heavy perfumes. I just feel and smell clean. That's an honest clean. Make a clean break with Ivory. You just can't beat Ivory's honest clean. Even when you're not playing so hot. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Why are you letting your cold keep you up? <laughs> Toughing it out alone, <laughs> shivering and shaking, coughing your night sweats, competing with a nose that runs like a champion, <laughs> wishing you could breathe as well with your mouth closed as with it open, wondering what it was you did to deserve to be this sick. Why? When there's NyQuil, the nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head, fever, so you can rest medicine. From Vicks, of course. Friday. <laughs> Lee and Amanda, destined to tie the knot. Absolutely. We'll do it. Determined not to bite the dust. Scarecrow and Mrs. King. Then. What have you done? Oh, my God. Sue Ellen becomes a vulnerable pawn. He's not after Sue Ellen. He's after me. In a game of revenge, Dallas and... There have been some strange, mysterious things going on. Are you falling in love with Richard Shen? They're gonna kill Dan. How would you like to go to work for me? Falcon Crest, Friday. Stucker Channing and Sam Waterston never thought they'd fall in love until he rented The Room Upstairs, a Hallmark Hall of Fame presentation, Saturday. If you've got friends who are trying to lure you into their deadly drug habits, I wonder what your enemies are up to. What do you think they're talking about in there? Use your imagination. is a Soviet spy. <laughs> well, Corey said he saw something like a gun and some other unusual objects in Mr. Van Slyke's desk. Uh, well, Corey has a vivid imagination, uh, Mr. Yes, I know. That's part of the problem. I think Corey's been harmed by his parents' divorce. He's a very frightened boy. He's trying to come to terms with real life. I think he deserves all our understanding and our help. No, I, I, I couldn't agree more. But, but at the same time, I, I, I can't have him spreading rumors about our teachers. I, Mr. Van Slyke is a, a, a dedicated educator. He's... Well, could it be some of the problem is with science, uh, something to do with Mr. Van Slyke? Could you tell me something about him? Oh, George. Uh, George is strict, but fair, fair. Uh, certainly not a spy. No, as, as a matter of fact, he lost half his family to Soviet tyranny. Where was that? That, um... Well, I, I, I don't remember right now. Well, Eastern Europe somewhere. <laughs> uh, Mr. McKay, um, see, the parents of most of our students are in the military or work at the air base. Some in very high-level security jobs. So we must put a stop to these rumors. Yeah, I understand. Uh, Mr. Cummings, would it be all right with you if I sat in on the rest of Corey's classes? See what his environment's like, get to know him better. Oh, it's, it is a pleasure to have you here at Amador. Corey is very fortunate to have somebody like you to help him. I only wish I had more time to spend with the students individually, you know, and to devote that time. I... <laughs> what happened? We'll talk about it later. What's your next class? Shop. But what are we going to do about Mr. Van Slyke? Well, that's what we have to deal with, isn't it? We only have till Saturday. Well, Corey, tell me about your father. What was he like? My dad? He's great. The greatest. You keep in touch? It's difficult. Well, doesn't he write or call? No. No, no he can't. Well, look, I shouldn't be telling you this, but... Since we're in on this thing together, I guess it's all right. Look, my dad's a deep cover operative in a company called the CIC. You know, he had to change his whole identity and everything. It's real heavy stuff. My mom doesn't even know. Corey, I thought your dad said he was married. Yeah, but that was just all part of the cover. See, the woman, she's an operative, too. They were just partnered on the same mission. You know what they do is real dangerous. Well, Alex is connected with the CIC. Perhaps he could check your father out. No, no, don't make waves. I told you you weren't supposed to know about this. Okay, I'm just not supposed to break security.
Corey, you miss your father, don't you? Yeah. But he had to do what he had to do, so... Look, there, that's the car that tried to run me over. I'm sure of it. Who's Redmond? It can't be. Mr. Redmond, my shop teacher. He must be in on it, too. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're trying to tell me your science teacher and your shop teacher are spies? And your dad, too? <laughs> Alex, why don't you uh, follow up a couple of Corey's leads? I'll go with him to his next class. It's a bit of a delicate matter. All right. Redmond. I thought he liked me. Spying's a cold business. And when I say 90 degrees, I mean 90 degrees. Understood, everyone? Bruce, cool your jets. It's a torch, not a flamethrower. Honey, you can worry about the eye makeup later. Wear the goggles. Who is this? Great White. I like it. All right, this is up. This roll, let's earn those grades, people. This fish should have been up on the roof yesterday. Bruce, are you suffering from intellectual malnutrition? Come here, boy. It's him right there, Redmond. He's pretty cool. He's in the metal. So heavy. Curtis, are you joining us today, or are you opting for an incomplete? Hey, bracket that with the three eights. Is this who I think it is? It is. Curtis, you finally scored some points in this class. Carl Redmond, sir. Pleased to meet you. It's a pleasure. It's a real, real pleasure. I'm a, a bit of an inventor myself. So oh, I got really? yeah, I got a few patents pending. Tools mainly. Oh, good luck with it. Thank you, sir. Oh, here you go. Surprise yourself. No, better yet, go on up and find me some three-quarter pot elbow. Okay? All right. All right. So, I hear you're adding a student counselor to your bag of tricks. <laughs> Word travels fast. <laughs> oh, the faculty gossip's even worse than the students. And as far as they go, you pick the worst of the bunch. Cora, he is way out there, man. Yeah, well, he seems a bit jittery today, uh... He says someone tried to run him down yesterday and they were driving your car. If anybody else had been driving my car, they would have run him down. Crazy kid was skateboarding in the middle of the street. welded together this semester. Hey, uh, while I got you here, m maybe you could uh, take a look at this laser saw idea I came up with. Ah! What the? Curry, where are you? Over here! Oh, man, what did you do? Curtis, you hurt? Hey! What happened? He was in here. Van Slyke. Somebody. He tried to get me. He ran out back there. It's a fire escape door, my friend. Lock to the outside. Nobody gets in and nobody leaves without triggering the alarm. You can't listen to him. Corey. He sent me up here. He sent me up. Corey, don't compound a stupid accident with a stupid lie. I'm not lying. Simon, they're trying to kill me. We got the wires. Now what? Okay, we've got the two rainbows and a grounder going from the timer to the positive end of the detonator. There's no time. I'm gonna risk it. No, no, wait! False leader. We've lost all the kingdom come. Well, then what wire do we cut? 
Laurie. It's your call. Cut the wire on the left. Corey. Cut it, Alex, now! Stop it. Snap out of it. What? Are you all right? Yeah. No, what are we wasting our time fixing a thermostat for? It's Saturday. Whatever Van Slyke and Redman are up to, it's happening now, right now. Now, just stop that. I think it's about time you and me had a word about the truth. About the difference between knowing what's real and what's make-believe. But this is real. Is it real like the story you told me about your father being a special agent? About that thermostat being a bomb ready to explode? Look, I saw the gun in the Russian code book in his drawer. And Saturday was circle. Saturday could have been Van Slyke's anniversary. He could be learning to speak Russian. The gun could be a squirt gun he's confiscated, just like he did your drawing. I know what a squirt gun looks like. But they're very realistic, aren't they? But they're not real. Corey, I checked your father out. He's a squadron commander at Andrews Air Force Base. He lives in Baltimore. He's remarried and he has nothing to do with the CIC. Okay, all right. Maybe I make things up sometimes. Maybe even a lot of the time. And I know my dad's no fancy agent. I just said that because... Well, I don't know, I thought it'd be easier to believe than... He thought it'd be easier to believe than he's not coming home. I guess so. I know my dad's not coming back. I know the truth, and I'm not lying to you about Van Slyke. I live a half a mile away from an Air Force base that he took pictures of. Spies could be using the school. Simon, if you don't believe me, who else do I have? All right. Alex, we'll finish up here. Why don't you go and see what's happening at the Air Force Base? All right. Corey, I'm sorry about your dad. I know how hard it is. Well, while Alex is looking at the story from his side, we can look at it from ours, all right? Enjoy extra sugar-free gum. You get extra flavor, extra fun, get extra sugar-free gum. Extra, the only leading sugar-free gum with NutraSweet, gives you extra refreshing flavor that lasts an extra, extra, extra long time. Extra flavor. Extra last, extra long. My dandruff shampoo is good. Better try something else. Mine really works. You'd better try something else, like Selsun Blue. Doctors recommend it more than all of the leading brands. None get rid of dandruff better than Selsun Blue. Vision's range top cookware by Corning withstands heat that turns ordinary saucepans into sauce. And unlike metal pans, they're perfect for the microwave. Visions by Corning. It's visibly superior. Eddie, this is Mrs. Butterworth. Hello, Eddie. I love your syrup. I need two syrups, regular and light. Mrs. Butterworth. And they're both delicious because... Because they're thick and rich and buttery. She really talks better than you. Mrs. Butterworth is twice as thick as maple syrup, so it pours slower. And it's made with grade A butter. Mrs. Butterworth's regular and light. <laughs> the wizard will continue. Americans, we know who we are. And when it comes to news, we know who we trust. Dan Rather, weeknights on the CBS Evening News. This is CBS. First there was Diet Lemon Lime Slice. Now there's Diet Mandarin Orange and Diet Apple Slice. We got the juice. Oh, it's such a flair. Three great tastes. We know nobody else has. We got the juice. 10% fruit juices. Orange, lemon, lime, and apple slice. Three diet flavors and it's just our guys. We got the juice. Lemon, lime, apple, and mandarin orange. Diet Slice. 
Eyewitness News at 6 and 10 with Wichita's first and most experienced co-anchor team, Roger Cornish and Susan Peters, reporting the day's most important stories. Susan Peters reports now live by satellite. Susan. That's right, Roger. In just about 20 minutes now... No matter where these stories break, Eyewitness News will be there to bring you the story. Experienced, committed, involved. The area's most popular news. Eyewitness News at 6 and 10, leading the way. Roger Cornish, leading the way. It's all locked up on Saturday. Let's break in. <laughs> That's too easy. I don't like breaking and entering, but if I have to choose, I'll take entering. What is that? This is my own special computer mouse. It's very user-friendly. And it's got a nose for hardware. Now, did you say Vance Light's computer was at the front of the class? Yep. Good. Very smart mouse. I think he's giving up. Here's a logic question for you, Corey. Which one of these doesn't fit in? They all have to do with school except for systems. Let's try. Unauthorized access. Password. Need a password. Okay, let's try Van Slyke. What about just his initials? Yeah. V.S. No luck. What about... What's the Russian word for systems? Uh, systemy. Try it. Mm. That looks like the radar dish we built in Metal Shop. <laughs> It's a lot more powerful than I thought. Do you believe me now? You keep watch out here.
isn't as fancy as my laser saw, but it will do the job. Well, this isn't fancy either, but it's a heck of a light. Ooh. Sounds like I'm talking to my class, doesn't it? It's all right, Corey. All right, roll it over to me. Now put your hands back up. The three of us are going for a little walk. <laughs> Red Corey! <laughs> it's nice, what's going on? <laughs> Sulfide. What? Stink bomb. I think we can give him the slip. I think not. Mr. Cummings, I don't believe this. Is this real? Is this really happening? I'm afraid so. <sighs> Welcome to the tomb of the unknown student. Consider this your safe house for the time being. Safe from who? From whom? As I mentioned before, Mr. McCain, I'm extremely delighted you came to visit our school. I'm sure with the proper packaging and transport, we can get you resettled on Soviet soil with a minimum of discomfort. There's a lot of people know we're here. By this afternoon, everybody around here is going to be much too distracted to help you. Get your welder. You got it. I want that door sealed shut. Oh, God, this isn't happening. Of course not. You're making it all up. Why can't I wake up? Don't worry, Corey. We're going to get out of this. Your fellow students are going to miss you, Curtis. After all, you've certainly helped the curve. Now, stay calm. We'll put our heads together and we're going to escape. Oh, way to go. I'll have you untied in a second. All right. Oh, the door's welded shut. Well, the only way to escape now is through that ventilation shaft. Well, how do we get up there? I think I've got something that might work. Come over here. Sit down. This usually works best in A minor. Come on, you can make it, Simon. You can make it, Simon. Cory. Cory, snap out of it. I'm here with you. Climb up, Simon. Hurry, climb up. Cory, I need you here. We need each other. We've got to find a way out of this. Can you hear me? people still have time for breakfast. Hey, save me something. I'm late. But some people in his family can't find time to fix breakfast. That's why there's Owen's Breakfast Biscuits with delicious Owen's Country Sausage or lean smoked ham and cheddar cheese. Both are ready in the microwave before you can say... Dad, I've only got a minute. Good, then you have time to fix your own breakfast. <laughs> okay. Owen's Sausage and Biscuits or Ham and Cheese and Biscuits. 
the best of farm and family. How soft? Jump! So soft. Jump! Ooh, very soft. Jump! 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 Bounce! Push those soft clothes you can't wait to jump into. Jump! Feels so good. Jump it! You are the one so warm and soft around me. Jump! 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 Bounce! Push those soft clothes you can't wait Corey, talk to me. I need your help. Whatever it is you're imagining won't get us out of here. You can't wish this one away. You've got to come back and face it. We'll face it together. Corey! All right, have it your own way. If you want to stay locked up in your own world, that's fine. But I'm going to find a way out of here. The wizard is leaving. Goodbye. Don't go. Please, Dad. Why do you have to go? I didn't do anything. That's right, Cody. You didn't do anything. Your father left you, but it's not your fault. You've got to break free. Where's your bag? The snake. I haven't got my bag. They took it. We're never going to get out of here. Away. Simon, I'm scared. So am I. You know, sometimes fear can be a great motivator. If you take hold of it, you can turn it to your advantage. Just like the imagination. Yeah, but the things I imagine can't work in the real world. You never know unless you try and apply them. What were you talking about? Simon, climb up. What was happening? What was going on? No, that was stupid. And you said something about a snake? Yeah, well, you see, you had this cobra, and you were playing this music. It kept coming out of your back to the ceiling. to that grating up there. I told you it was stupid. Cobra, you said? Honey, I sure hope you don't mind my barging in this way, but with Alex and Simon gone so long, I thought they might need my help. Where did they go? I don't know where they went. Or Corey. I I'm worried that something happened. All right, now keep calm. Where's Mr. Curtis? Home. His home. Oh. I'll give you the shake, huh, honey? Well, let me tell you, that's happened to me a couple of times. He writes, Corey, but Corey won't open the letters. He's hurt. He feels betrayed, and it's affected everything in his life. His schoolwork, his appetite, us. Well, something's happened to Corey. Uh, I just... Shh, 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 shh. Hang in there now. You know, really, I ain't all that worried. Because your son is in the hands of the best, Simon and Alex. If ever I saw two guys in complete sync, they're it, like a homing pigeon. Simon. Tilly, what are you doing here? Looking for you. Where's Simon and Corey? They were here. They're gone. Holy cow. <laughs> Cobra's head, if ever I saw one. Will it hold? There's only one way to find out. How's it gonna get up to the pipe? Well, I haven't got my flute. We're just gonna have to lift it. Stop, Andy. Gotta try again. We'll keep it close to the wall. Are you sure? Have you got any better ideas? Now we just got 
and lock it on. Thanks to you. Imagination to everyday life. You end up at the bottom of a smokestack. After you. Why would they be at school? It's Saturday. Now, uh, Corey's convinced that his science and shop teachers are spies, oh, and that God. something's going down today. What does Simon think? I think Simon believes the kid. Figures. What's he doing to my son? He's trying to help him. By encouraging him to hide deeper in fantasy? Oh, honey, if Simon believes somebody, there's something there to believe. Vance like and Redmond. They are saboteurs. And so is Mr. Cummings. The principal? Mr. McKay, enough is enough. Corey, you're coming home with me. No, Mom, they tied us up and welted the door. We had to climb up a snake to get out the chimney. Corey. He's telling the truth. Maybe this isn't a coincidence. What? The Air Force is testing a new cruise missile today. Well, that's it. That's what we saw in Redmond's workshop. They've got to be close by. We must find the satellite dish. Alex, they're armed. Get the police. Tilly, take Mrs. Curtis and Corey home now. No, I'm coming with you. Corey! What is it? This is a scale model of the missile about to be launched. They must have built this one to test the antenna. They're going to do something to the real one. Not if we can help it. Come on, we've got to work fast. Prepare to launch missile in one minute. Roger, tower. One minute and counting. They started, and yet they started now with the weak Germans. The start of this battle is a hard fight. Stop it. Cassiette. Private here or partner. Stop. Stop, Stutschnitz. It's a little bit of a partner. Good on, let's see. Now the bitch out. Make believe. Yep, that was real. You see, Corey, you should never let your imagination run away with you. Never let your imagination run away with you. Never let your imagination run away with you. Simon. Simon, you should. You said you were only going to test this thing for five minutes. How long have I been here? Three hours. Workmen have just finished. I just want to thank you for letting me come here with my dad. I had a great time. I'm glad to hear you and your dad are back together again. My dad and I are together all the time. What do you mean? Huh. Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to startle you, Mr. McKay. Uh, we were just getting ready to leave, and I uh, want to say goodbye. Come on, son. 
Yeah, we got the uh, satellite dish hooked up in your yard. It works beautifully. Yeah, and the electricity's in. I gave you, um, uh, you know, enough circuits to cover everything. I landscaped it so it won't be an eyesore. Oh, thanks, everybody. You've done a good job. Oh, it's, it's a great. Pleasure. Pleasure. Come Come on. On. Goodbye now. Aren't you Cody's mother? No, I don't have any children. Oh, of course not. Goodbye. Are you all right? Yeah, fine. What do you want to talk about? Imagination? Oh, I was just saying you should never let your imagination run away with you. You never know where it will lead. <laughs> <laughs>